forests have really become central in the climate change debate. And because C4 had you know, 12 or 14 years of, of, of this research behind it, it's actually been able to step up and provide some useful answers to some of the questions that, were, that have come up in, in policy making around how to reduce deforestation for the climate change benefits that, that can happen. The research C4 has done on decentralization, forest tenure, I think is instrumental. We've helped to define some of the key concepts. Um, we've contributed to debates. I think we've really made valuable contributions to it. C4 has grown to be regarded as a major player in, in the forestry world and we have a very good reputation among a variety of stakeholders for high quality research and that's um, started with the, the scientists who, who worked in the institution a long time ago who really built that core of high quality work and, and that sense continued. C4 brought about major changes by getting people onto the agenda in a more meaningful way. I mean, obviously for many years people recognized that forests were important for people, but I think we you know, provided evidence for that and we constructed our research around a, a fairly integrated vision of forests and people. And we took the messages from that research into the international arena quite effectively. See for us really made a lot of impact on the forest dialogue over the past 20 years, on forests and livelihood issues, forests and governance, uh, the issues of large-scale land conversion to plantations. And I think one of the greatest achievements that we, we had is being able to establish a, a, a personal, a human relation with, uh, with the partners with which we work. And, uh, and these are government officials, uh, government institutions, uh, NGOs on the ground, the civil society at large. Putting forests on the agenda, high up on the agenda, with respect to natural resource management and policy issues at global level, is the biggest achievement C4 has made in the last 20 years. Different demands on the forest is going to increase a lot. Fuelwood, conservation, for carbon storage and sequestration, for biodiversity, for land, for food production, for recreation. All these demands is going to increase so a lot more pressure, conflicts related to how to use and manage forests. I think how to solve that challenge, how to balance the different interests, the different uses, the different services of the forests, that's going to be the key challenge if we we're able to manage it. The, the real challenge is now to, to bring forestry and, and agriculture and land management decisions together in coherent ways so that we find you know, truly sustainable long-term solutions to, to, the, to the pressures that are being put on by, by the growing populations and by growing demands of, of wealthier populations on the natural resource base. The more we interact with the group, the problems arise and uh, the challenge uh, there and we try to, to learn more and more. The main challenge for including uh, peatland as part of the climate change mitigation is that it's not clear who governs peatland. So it remains a big challenge for us to make sure that we understand how the system works and if there is any chance to uh, improve or contribute, that's, that's our role in research. Obviously forests are facing a lot of challenges with climate change and uh, population growth and um, need for, for resources such as timber. Um, I guess for me it really comes down to climate change and, and looking at the forest role in both adaptation and, and mitigation. Making sure that forests are not the victim of their own success because increasingly we've shown that forests have a role to play in many of livelihood issues, health, food security, and, um, but especially income. And uh, so making sure that these forests remain, that they remain relevant, that they are not destroyed, I think those would be some of the challenges in the coming years. Well, I think there's going to continue to be a lot of debate on who has rights over forests, who's going to control them, and who has the, the ability to, to take advantage of the benefits, the resources that are found in forests. Uh, I think we'll continue to see a tra trajectory where local people have more rights. I think they're going to be able to find more innovative ways to use forests. Going forward, I think it's really important that we see forests and forestry in context. We need to work together with agriculture at the landscape level to find the better sustainable solutions for the future. 
and we need to put forests and forestry as a part of and a contribution to economic development. We can't see the forest sector in isolation that will not give us the solutions we need for sustainable development.